Okay, so I've asked a question on expectations. Um, <clears throat> well, okay, so who, who, you know, so here's the thing, there's different levels of um, consciousness. Now, the only thing that can have boundaries is a, a separate sense of self. <clears throat> you know, so if I, uh, depending on how much of the ego, how much spiritual work, how much letting go you've done, your sense of individual self starts to dissipate. Um, <clears throat> and the more spiritual work you do, the more, um, uh, uh, I think Hawkins described it well, when I was in active addiction, the sense of limited self becomes very, very strong. And so there's, a, there's very, very strong expectations, there's very, very strong outcomes in getting relief from the world. You know, because I feel, you could say, in the ego there's a strong feeling of fear and separation. So when you're in a strong feeling of fear and separation, then things become very addictive or very control oriented to get some kind of relief from the external world. So when I was uh, in active addiction, feeling this sense of being very much in my body, feeling very, very limited, and thinking, you know, and the thoughts go at 100 miles an hour of just having plots, you know, like when can I get my next bag of donuts? You know, and then eating those donuts you know, there'd be a strong expectation, when I eat those donuts, I'm going to be so happy, and then I'd eat those donuts, and I'd be very, very happy for a short time. So th things are very, very extreme uh, when you're in that level of ego. As you do spiritual work, things become more gentle. So your outcomes, expectations, and the need to control the world to get happy or to escape from fear, uh, the, uh, uh, the attractions and diversions, you know, become much more milder, you can stay more present. So, you know, it's be like, um, so what would be an, out, an, you know, like an outcome or an expectation could be, oh, I can't wait to eat some donuts later on, or I can't wait to ask that girl out, or, or uh, I hope that girl says yes, or I hope these donuts taste good, or this cake tastes good, or whatever it is, or I hope I get a promotion. So. Those outcomes, the ego, so there's a separate, set, separated sense of self that has a future-based outcome or expectation to feel happier when it can control something or get something in the future. So that orientation starts to develop. And if it doesn't get what it wants, depending on the level of um, disconnection from spirit, if you like, you know, then it, gets, it goes on big highs or lows, depending on whether it gets what it wants oh, I'm going to ask this girl out, she said, yes, I'm in ecstasy, or she said, no, I'm going to be depressed. So that becomes less. So as you go, so at a certain level, usually for, uh, I would say, normal human beings who are not extreme addicts and are not at the levels of non-duality, then it's quite a therapeutic term. We sort of say, you have boundaries, you know, like you'll speak to your therapist and they'll sort of say, oh, the next time, <clears throat> what could be it? Okay, the, the, next time, um, the next time somebody offers you a donut, just say you have a boundary that, no, I'm not going to accept any donuts or cakes or whatever. So that becomes like a mental thing that the ego imposes to, to protect itself or to not have outcomes or expectations which are either negative or positive. So when you get to... Um, so uh, when people start talking about things like unconditional love or non-duality, we're now getting into the higher spiritual states. So unconditional love is a way of letting go of what I call the more therapeutic model of like, I feel like I'm, I'm a normal human being in this body and I'm going to have boundaries, you know, I'm going to think about boundaries with my therapist and I'm going to say, look, you know, you can't do this or you can do that or look, I'm going to say no to cakes if anyone offers me or whatever it is. Or so. But when you start practicing unconditional love, there's two levels up from that. One is usually, there's two major spiritual levels. One is unconditional love and one is enlightenment, non-duality. But the level of unconditional love, you're going to start letting go of the idea of outcomes and expectations from, from people and from life. So that's the practice of unconditional love. Or, you know, um, <clears throat> so... Um, I was like, you know, what really, really struck me, uh, if I can just share this story, was I remember, because I remember, you know, obviously St. Francis is a saint. Obviously, they, they practice unconditional love. And I had this old black and white uh, DVD of a St. Francis movie. And there's this guy, uh, there's the leper. 
walking across the fields. And there is St. Francis. He goes off and gives him a big hug. You know, this guy probably is full of shame and doesn't want anyone to go near him. And he gives him his hug. And that's the practice of unconditional love. Because from outcomes and expectations, I also remember, you know, like the Dalai Lama, wasn't it? Like, whatever food you give him, he'll eat it. You know, it's like, you know, you won't say like, well, I think this looks a bit too disgusting, you know, or whatever. I think that was on one of those, those, you know, it might be wrong anyway, but I think it was something like that. He would eat it, whatever. He had, had this unconditional acceptance of life. And also with St. Francis, this unconditional love. No, there's no such thing as an ugly or a pretty person. You know, oh, I'll give you a hug because you're, you're, you're gorgeous. But no, no, I can't hug you because please, please stay away from me. So... So those are the things that the ego has, these dualistic ideas within it. Like, uh, it'll have outcomes and it'll have good and bad labels for everything. So you transcend. In unconditional love, um, if you're practicing unconditional love, uh, you know, you'll hug your mother equally as much as you'll hug, hug your lover. You know, because, or you'll hug, you'll actively try and let go of your judgments or outcomes and expectations of the differences between people. So you can't, you know, so if you're practicing unconditional love, <clears throat> usually um, the things like, you, you have these words like a broken heart. You can't, you can't have a broken heart. You can have a broken ego. Um, <clears throat> because um, uh, the essence of love is unconditional. But your ego can have a thing of where it's like, it likes things and it doesn't like things. So you say, oh, you know, I, oh, I'm going out with this girl and she says, look, you know, you're dumped, I'm going out with this other guy, and so I'll say, oh, you've broken my heart, how can you, <clears throat> how can you go off with this other guy? That's not my heart breaking, that's my ego breaking, because the heart is unconditional. It doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't, you know, if it was true love, I mean, it, there'd be, uh, you know, at these different levels of consciousness, but there'd, there'd be places where there'd be happiness for the other person, you know, there wouldn't be this, like, Oh, you're the source of my love, and without you, I'm going to kill myself because you're not going with somebody else. So, so that's the thing. And then when you get to um, enlightenment and non-duality, of course, here comes the thing of like boundaries. And because, like, let's say that I'm identified with my thoughts and my body, and if I just keep practicing being the observer of my thoughts and my body, i.e., the individual self or the the special self, or the limited self, then this idea of a limited, <clears throat> a limited sense of self starts to disappear. Everything starts to become spontaneous, intuitive, out of the present moment. There is no such thing as a thinking mind trying to uh, edit life or say yes or no. To, I mean, it can, it can do, but it's not coming from the personal, the personal self. So there's no such thing as boundaries. Everything is intuitively, spontaneously arising out of consciousness, or as the um, Course in Miracles would say, the holy instant. Because there's a sense of oneness, and out of this holiness, out of this oneness, um, whatever happens arises out of that spontaneously. So there is no such thing as a thinking separate self trying to make boundaries. Everything's coming out of source. So boundaries doesn't, the idea of boundaries doesn't exist at the level of enlightenment. So as you're going up, yes, you would let go. That's one of the, gra the greatest things. Um, uh, to do is let go of the idea of you know uh, outcomes and expectations. In the twelve step groups I go to, if you, they say if you have an expectation, you're setting yourself up for resentment. You know, like uh, you know, I want uh, I want uh, you know everyone here to tell me how amazing I am, and if you have that expectation, you know, and someone says you're not amazing, then you know then that's an outcome. You know that your ego it's the ego that wants that. The ego wants things, it wants certain things to go its way, outcome, outcomes, and it also wants things not to happen as well, you know, which is also an outcome. But can you not have an expectation with, um, without being attached to the expectation? I would say that's going more to the higher levels of consciousness, yes. Okay. I mean, we're talking, you have to talk simplistically yeah. at the different, but yes. Okay. You know, the more, you're, the more you're, you become present and whole and mm -hmm. towards oneness, yeah, there's some level of ego, but it, it's going to be more or less at... At, you know, at the higher levels of consciousness, there will be hardly any outcome or expectation, or if things will be very, very loose and almost non-existent. So more like, probably more like prefer slight preferences that come out of out of wholeness. Yeah. So, 
but definitely at the lower levels of consciousness it's, it's like strong and there's a very if you don't get your way you'll have an extreme reaction for not getting your way in that way but it's uh, someone was asking a question, but it, it, is, it is a thing. It would be a practice, you know, to have no outcomes and expectations, to love unconditionally would be a, a pathway of practicing unconditional love. Um, why? Because the ego always thinks, you know, you get love or you can escape things if, you get, if the world behaves in a certain way. If I get a donut today, then I'm going to be happy. If I don't get a donut, or if it rains today, I'll be unhappy. So, as you let go of all, of, these are like limited ideas, these are limited programs that operate within the ego. So as you, you know, pick off this thing, I can only be happy if I get a donut today, or I can't be happy if it rains today. As you take out those limited ideas that stay within the ego, then eventually you start to realize that the source of love is, is kind of linguistic, is always with you. Like the presence, or God consciousness, or the light, or the infinite, the infinite presence is always here. It doesn't need the world or a person to behave in a different way for that presence to be experienced. So you, you then let go of the limiting ideas of the ego. The only the ego can have, the separated sense of self can have outcomes and expectations and desires and, and uh, you know, dualistic uh, perceptions. 